Hey there guys, it's Artifacts. I know it's a really long while that I've um, done a video, but it's not because the channel is that. That's not the case. Um, I've just been doing a lot of other stuff right now. I've, I've uh, got a lot of other things that I got to do and I haven't really had time to make any videos. Now, I wanted to make this video because I've got this new track that I'm working on and I've got this really, really cool sound that I think a lot of you guys would be interested to know how to make it. So I'm gonna play you this little clip and then we're gonna make the sound. Um, it's the sound that's going on right here during that end part. Um, and I'm gonna explain it to you, how to make it. So, there we go. Three, two, one. So it's that really narrowish, squelchy, kind of reesey thing that's going on there, that pitch bendy kind of thing. Now, to um, make this, I'm not going to show you the actual bass sound or um, the thing with, with which I started. Let's keep it at that. Um, damn, I can't talk today. Um, let's just get started. The sound that I'm talking about is made up of two individual patches and they sound like so it's actually two times the same sample that I've used um, and I'm gonna show you how to create something like this now um, to create the sample you're gonna need a sample pack and um, I'm gonna put a link up to this free sample pack in the description of this video it's a uh, the Neurohop forum sample pack. I, th I don't know for sure if it's version 1 or 2, but I'm just gonna put the links to both of the two um, in the description of this video. I'll have to see if the links are still working, but if they are, I'll put them in the description. Now, the thing is, you don't really need these bases to create sounds like this. It's just, you can do this with any kind of bass amp, which just um, start with some kind of a neuroish kind of bass sample and then it's all about what you do in the sampler to get this particular kind of feeling now just listening at the the thing it started off from this sample right so what i've done is you can see i've put it into a sampler and um, it's really, really simple. Um, I'm just looping a small little part. Um, just created that loop. You can click the sustain mode and then you can just drag these edges to where the, where you want them to be. So I, I've basically taken a little part about half of the clip. I found a nice part. Um, I like this one because it kind of like, you know, it, it moves from that um, you know really clean sound down here to the more noisy sound down there so I think that really helps it gives it that nice um, modulation so so you can see if we move it down here We kind of like get the different um, sound from it. So you can play around with that and just find a, a small little part of a clip that you like that sounds good and just loop that. Now, most of the time you're going to get a little bit of a clicky sound when it loops. Um, just bring up the crossfade down here. Just bring that crossfade up a little and you'll get rid of that click. Um, what I always like to do when I do these kind of things is create yourself a folder of bass sounds that you've made and resampled so you've bounced them to audio and just put the file name um, just put the um, how do you say that I, I really can't talk today now um just put the key in the file name so that whenever you're gonna use that sound or gonna resample it or throw it in a sampler you know what key it is and you can actually just dial in the key down here at the root key like this is 
recorded in a G, the file name says that, so I'm just gonna put in G2 right there. And that'll basically mean that when I play a G on my keyboard, it's gonna play that G. Now, of course, we have the pitch envelope going on right now, so that's just what we would get. And this is G, by the way, so. We can just play this now, and we can actually play a Reese kind of thing with it. So, that's a big part of the sound, you know, just being able to. And it speeds up, you know, when you um, do that pitch bending kind of thing. So, we can bring that time up if we want and really make it a bit more drastic. So, you see, so you can create really interesting Reese's that way. You can just throw in any kind of sample, just create a loop, find something that works, and you will be able to get really, m well, much more interesting Reese bases out of that, just using that technique. Now, um, there is some processing on this, you can see I have this uh, ODT, which is just the uh, multiband compression, really bringing up all the frequencies, kind of like leveling out the highs and the mids and the lows, which I find, or found, Kind of worked on this bass, made it sound a little bit better, so I put it on there. Um, there's this glue compressor, which um, is basically just bringing the level up, just squashing it a bit, bringing that level up to uh, 0 dB. And then this, there's this utility, which I'm not even using right now. That's coming from the original project to do some kind of side chaining kind of thing. Um, now for the uh, actual sound. What gives that bass or that bass? What what gives it that movement that this particular one has is the actual movement on the pitch. So because we're looping this really small part, and you can hear when I play this um, low B note, and then play a B note one octave higher, that loop is going to speed up right and we're gonna use that particular thing that speeding up of that loop because when you go up and pitch it basically just gonna play back the file faster and because we have set up this that loop it's gonna play that loop faster and faster and faster the higher we go up in key so you can hear it now the same thing will happen when we apply a pitch envelope to the sound and that's how I created this sound. So I am going to enable the pitch envelope and I really just played around with this and um, the thing is what I did here is all down to a lot of different things. I mean I'm gonna explain that in a moment but bear with me. We've got this pitch envelope and I'm um, bending up with an amount of plus 15 semitones. So that means that I'm going up a full octave and then I'm going up another three semitones so that means that we're gonna get um, we're gonna go up a minor third and a full octave so if you're a little bit aware with or a little bit comfortable with music theory you know that we're now still falling on a note in the skill if we're using a minor skill and this track is in the minor skill so that works now um, to get that movement I wanted to have the start of the sound sound low and round and still have that nice impact that the original sample had but I wanted to get that speeding up movement that um, right after the start of the sound so what did I do is I started with the attack and I took an attack of about 400 milliseconds and what that does is it lets that original um, sound at the original pitch come through when I press a note that's that first hit before it pitches, pitches up, right? So that's really easy. It's just bringing up the attack, and I've just brought the curve down to negative 100%. I'm not really sure. I think that's a default, but just change it if it's not. Now, then we go to the decay. Um, the decay is set at two seconds, um, and what this is gonna do is basically just the time it will take for that pitch to go from that plus 15 down to um, whatever the sustain value is. Now, 
The sustain value on this particular sound is not 0%, so we're actually going to bend down lower than the original pitch where we're starting at, so on which we're starting at. So um, what that means is that I had to do that. It's just this is why it ended up like that. Is um, when I was working on this track, I really had to uh, kind of like get the right motion, the right movement, and I wanted to have one particular wobble just really end up at that last part of the sound. And um, that was quite difficult. You can hear it in the, in the original. Just it had to transition between that this part into that second part, and to really make sure that it transitioned well, I had to fine tune the decay time so that decay time is n is not exactly two seconds it's 1.99 seconds and the sustain I actually brought it down further than the zero percent so I'm actually going down to a negative 39 percent and that kind of helped to um, get that particular movement that I wanted to make sure that the wobble ended right on that particular point where I wanted it to end um, thing is with these kind of bases it doesn't really matter what pitch you're working in because most of the time these bases are so goddamn complex that the human ear won't even be able to distinguish notes or be able to say like oh yeah that's a B or that's a G or you're not gonna be able to do that so um then I've basically taken that same sample again just the same uh, same thing I've just um Let's see, what I did is I looped a really small part on this one. It's the same file, it's the same sample, just looped a really, really small part. Turned off the pitch envelope, so we don't have any pitch movement going on in this. But I did bring up the pitch bend range to plus 24. So I think there is a pitch bend in here, yeah. So, so and then I've just made a downward pitch envelope. So we've actually just have that pitch bend going down from plus 24 to zero. I don't know which note this is, it's just a B. Yeah, it's the B note. So those two together kind of like create that final sound. And that's really powerful you know that that second hit um, kind of transitions into the next part of the track and the processing on it is pretty much the same um, there's just a low pass going on on that final hit just a little bit of low passing towards the end of the sound and I think I did yeah I did a volume envelope uh, volume volume automation on this particular sound and I think this really works now <clears throat> that's basically it for this sound and you can just do this with any sound you want so to demonstrate that <laughs> because this kind of pretty much works with any sound you want I'm just gonna go in here so we've got that um <laughs> We've got that one, kind of works. So I'm just going to take another one. And just loop the really small part. And let's just bring that crossfade a little bit down. So... You can hear you can just take other sounds and just put them in there. But you know, the key is to um, getting these sounds and to make them sound right is just to experiment with different samples you know you don't have to have these kind of samples you can just take anything um, spend an afternoon just um, making bass sounds making neuroish kind of bass stuff and then just at the end when you've when you when, when you're done doing that just um, start putting them in samplers you know just save yourself this folder with really insane bass sounds that you've made I've got myself a folder like that um, 
as you can see I've got my own toolbox right here um, and I've got this one particular folder called, uh, called base complex modulations and in there I just put in any kind of sample that I've made and these are just really really crazy bass sounds um, these are not aimed at oh yeah I'm gonna use this in a track the way it is no these are all meant to um, resample or chop off chop out small little parts to fill up a track stuff like that so you know just long greasy kind of things and some of them have a lot of movement in them as well some have pitch bands some don't have pitch bands it's, it's, it's all just up to taste but just creating that folder for yourself is really gonna give you all these interesting sounds to work with so um that's it um i hope you like this video now if you want to see more of these videos subscribe to this channel of course like always but um i want to tell you that i've got um you can buy sample packs that i make i create sample packs that i you know with which i create these interesting sounds that um you can hear in my tunes so there's going to be drum sounds bass sounds anything like that i do sample packs and preset packs um, currently on my website, which is www.artifacts-studios.com, the link will be in the description on this video. You can get um, a bunch of preset packs and a bunch of sample packs that I've made. Um, I've currently got two packs for Extra Rec and Serum, one pack for Massive, and I think it's a few sample packs. Um, if you want to get one of those, Go to my website, check them out, it would be really cool. Um, there's also a free pack on there with some free wavetables for extra record serum. I've been working on the pack that I'm currently sort of like finishing right now. It's going to be a vocal sample pack. And I'm also working on quite some other stuff. There's going to be a second um, serum base sample pack coming up soon. Or serum base preset pack coming up soon. Um, yeah, and other than that, I hope you like this video and hope to see you back soon. Peace.